amazing God. He is awesome in this place. Invite him in your home right now. Have him come to your home, wherever you are, wherever situation you're in. Leave that all behind. Set your eyes and your heart to God.
to the altar. Oh, come to bring it to the altar. Bring your hurts, bring your pain. Bring your anxiety, your depression. Whatever's bogging you down, bring it to the altar. God has forgiven you. The precious blood of Sing it one more time. Oh, come to the altar. Oh, come to the altar. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. Precious blood of Jesus. He laid it all down for you. We thank you. We thank you for your love. Thank you, Jesus, just as I am, I come, hallelujah, oh, what amazing love. Thank you, Jesus, just as I Hallelujah, we say no fear, 
no fear of condemnation by faith I'm justified but actually we'll sing that again I stand a new creation I stand a new creation baptized in blood and fire we declare we have no fear no fear of condemnation by faith I'm justified we will rise and I will rise I will rise as Christ was raised to life and now in Him now in Him I live what we say and I will rise I will rise as Christ was raised to life now working God and if he's already sent his son to die and give us life in him there is nothing impossible we just have to declare it in faith come on church we sing
Hallelujah. What a powerful declaration to be able to just know that no matter what circumstances we face, no matter what may be happening in our life, that Jesus and God continues to be above everything. And just as we were declaring a little while ago that I will rise, I will rise as Christ was raised to life. Can I get an amen? Again, no matter what this week, this past week may have looked like, no matter what this upcoming week upcoming month, upcoming year may look like in your life. We want to be able to just declare the goodness of God to be able to be over every situation. I want to be able to just read to you from Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 16. It says, when Jesus came to Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples this question. What are people saying about me? The son of man. Who do they believe that I am? They answered, Some are convinced you are John the Baptizer. Others say you are Elijah reincarnated or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But you, who do you say that I am? Jesus asked. Simon Peter spoke up and said, You are the anointed one, the son of the living God. There's always going to be a circumstance in a situation where people are going to ask, where God even asks us, who he is in our life. And today, this morning, is an invitation for us not to be able to just respond what everybody else says. Not to be able to just respond with what someone told us or what we heard, but for it's an invitation for us to be able to experience who Jesus is at this time. And so again, my encouragement for all of us, just as we go into this prayer, is to first and foremost ask and allow the Holy Spirit to be able to reveal to us who Jesus is in this time. A lot of us right now are bringing impossible situations. A lot of us right now have a lot of prayers that might not be answered. A lot of us might be going through a lot of different things. Some of us are asking for more grace. Some of us are asking for strength. Some of us are asking for finances, for provision, for healing, for whatever it may be. But now is also a time for us to be able to just come before the Lord and for the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus to us. So I just want to be able to just invite you right now, if we could just lift up our hands. Uh, if, you're not, if you're driving, please continue to keep your hand on the wheel. But if you are at home or wherever you may be, if we could just lift up our hands uh, toward heaven. Father God, we just want to be able to just humble ourselves before you. No matter what our day has looked like, no matter what our week has looked like, no matter what our year has looked like, no matter how the past years we have looked like, God, we just want to be able to come before you and just ask that you would just reveal to us who Jesus is. Who Jesus is in our life, who Jesus is in our circumstances, who Jesus is no matter what we may be facing. And Lord, we just ask and pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just continue to give us eyes to see in this moment, ears to hear in this moment, and that we would just allow our hearts to just be open to you as we just hear your word this morning. We continue to pray, Father God, for everyone that is out there, Lord, for our families, for our communities, Lord, for our loved ones, for our church. We continue to declare your healing power, God, over our lives, over anyone and everyone that needs a miracle. We continue just to ask, God, that you would provide for us, Lord, in this time and uncertainty with these circumstances, this never-ending pandemic, this never-ending political situation, this never-ending things that are happening, Lord, with so much uncertainty in terms of jobs, in terms of school, in terms of whatever it is we, we may be facing, we just ask and pray, Lord, that you would be with us in the midst of this storm. And Lord, we continue to thank you, God, for everything that you are doing. And Lord, just in this time, Lord God, just in this way, as we have finished the 21 days of prayer and fasting, and as we are continuing to look forward to 2021, 
we just pray, Lord, that you would just give us vision, that you would give us insight, that you would give us wisdom, Lord, that you would give us revelation of who Jesus is in this time. Lord, we are grateful, we are thankful, Lord, for everything that you are doing in and through our lives. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Uh, once again, we uh, continue to thank you and just welcome you for joining us this morning. Uh, again, if you want to be able to just enter in your praise reports or comments uh, in, the, in the chat below, please do so. Before we go into our announcements, we have a special announcement from our Marriage Works Ministry. Good morning, Cross Culture. On behalf of myself, my husband Alex Soriano, and Dennis and Mary Lou Reyes, we want you to know that God wants your marriage to work. And so we have a special invitation for all the married couples, newly married couples and not so newly married couples to join us on Sunday, February 7th at 3 p.m. for a special Zoom call. Our church theme this year is No Limits and we believe the same is for our, our marriages. This is why we are compelled and God has placed it in our heart that, that this time we need to come together and find a way to reset, restart, and rekindle our marriages in the way that God had planned it, to build it in his, as his blueprint had built it. So praise the Lord. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure um, we're still staying at home, right, on Sundays. Uh, so on this event, I, want, I, want, I would like to invite every single couple in our church. If 2020, we, we had one event, but for this 2021, I want us to all uh, to participate, whether you're newly married, like they said, or long timer, marriage, 25, 30, 40 years, come and we'll meet and we'll, we'll just have a good time. And remember, God is the author of marriages, right? So we will dig deeper into the word of God and what the, what the, what the creator says about marriage. So I'll see, we'll see you there, February 7th, 3 o'clock p.m. We will send the link and you'll be able to access it. Thank you. God bless you. Twenty twenty. What a year to start over from. Good morning, church. Welcome to our service. Some of you in here have said, Dear 2021, I've been here for 24 days and I'm ready to cancel my subscription. Can you believe it? 24 days have passed this month so far, and the weather has already foretold how wild and interesting this year will be. We've gone from 80s to 90 degrees one week to a frozen rain yesterday. I got hail in my backyard. Ice covered my backyard. 
how crazy is that in the valley? Well, I do hope that you are staying warm and are all doing well. How are you, start, how are you starting this year? Many of us have had our lives turned upside down. And I can only imagine the many areas in your life that have been impacted by this virus, this, this climate, this world. Now let's talk about some highlights in, in your 2020. And if you're joining us from Facebook or YouTube, type in the chat something positive, a highlight for your year. We'd love to hear from you. Find the good. Let's hear it. I'm sure you can find the good that... The good that God has deposited in your life, if you just look a little closer. Often when we can't see the, that, that good that God has deposited in our lives, we tend to look for it elsewhere. Today I will be speaking about starting over. What do you do when everything seems to be over? How do you get back up when all things that matter seem just gone or utterly hopeless. I work in an ICU in a local hospital, and I often hear so many stories about how so many people wish they could, they could start over. I hear them at the bedside, and sometimes, sometimes the families would, would talk about how they could wish they could fix something in, in, a, in a strained relationship, or, or how they wish they could just get their health back so that they can Make things right. It's very seldom that I hear them about their accomplishments and their wealth and the things that they have accumulated. A lot of times, it has a lot to do with family, a loved one, a friend that they wish they could connect more. Friends, I'm here to just remind us that we don't need to wait in our deathbed to start over. We can start right here, right now. And my prayer today is that from this sharing, you would have some insight in how to start over. Oh, how much someone will pay to be able to start life again. Like press a, a reset. To just undo the things that some of us have done and regretted. It's not too late. How I know is because you're still with us. You're not six feet under. So let's go on with our um, word today. There's many stories in the Bible about starting over. But I would like us to take a closer look at the story of David and, and Bathsheba. It's found in 2 Samuel chapter 11 and 12. And I'll be paraphrasing this, so just bear with me for the sake of time. It's quite long. I want to encourage you to read it on your own time and see if you see what I see. I'm sure you will pick up more. But before we dive into that, let's just do a quick prayer. Would you bow down your head with me? Father, here we are, your servants, O oh God. We need you right here right now to speak to each one of us. Lord, let your word be proclaimed and nothing else, Lord God, that you would speak, Holy Spirit, to the very core of us to remind us of who we are in your sight. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord God, for being here with us, wherever we are in our homes, everywhere in our place, in Jesus' name, amen. So the story goes in 2 Samuel 11, it was springtime during the time where kings go to war. David had military campaigns. They were supposed to be going to war and during this time, and I'm sure some of you are familiar with this. But instead of King David going to lead the war, he allows his general, his top general, to kind of just do the bidding of the war and he stays home. One evening, probably couldn't sleep, so he gets up from his bed and goes to the balcony of his palace. And I imagine him looking and walking around, and he notices a beautiful woman. She was bathing. Her name was Bathsheba. 
and he likes what he sees. And he asks for her. He commits adultery with her, gets her pregnant, and then he tries to cover his tracks by bringing Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, from the battlegrounds to come to home to her. Even as far as he, getting Uriah drunk to lessen his convictions and his morals, but it didn't work. Uriah was uh, more honorable than David had expected. When David asked him, why haven't you gone home to your wife? I mean, aren't you coming from a war? Don't you want to get comfortable and be home? But Uriah said this in 2 Samuel eleven eleven. He said this to David, the ark and Israel and Judah are staying in tents. And my commander Job and my Lord's men, my people, are, are camped in the open country. How could I go to my house to eat and drink and make love to my wife? As surely as you live, I will do no, no such a thing. So David frustrated because he was unable to coerce Uriah to go home to his wife, tries to fix the problem. He orders his general, his commander, Joab, to put Uriah in front of the front line of the, of the war, where the fighting was the fiercest in that battleground so that he would get killed. In other words, he murders the man. He murders Bathsheba's husband so he can take her to be his wife and bear his child. Now, in the eyes of the people, it was all innocent. Uriah just died from the war. Simply. But you see, God saw. God sees. God sees through each one of us. Every motive of our heart is never hidden from him. God sees through the depths of us. 2 Samuel eleven twenty seven 27b says, But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. God was not happy with David. Just consider for a moment with me, because this is the same David the courageous noble teen who defeated the giant Goliath. He had a strong faith, stronger than many in the army. This, was the, this is the same man who is called, who was anointed by the prophet Samuel, a man after God's own heart. The same David who led misfits and people who were marginalized and gave him a second chance. This is the same David who dared not lay a hand on King Saul, but honored him to be God's anointed. He didn't even know how to take vengeance because he feared God. The same David who loved the, word, the Lord, who worshipped the Lord so hard, he was dancing and singing in worship, and he didn't care what any of his people would, would think of him, even how foolish he looked in their eyes. The same David that wanted to build the house of God. The same David who wrote the many chapters, the prayers, the songs, the laments in the book of Psalm. It really makes you wonder, doesn't it? What happened? Is it really the same David? There's a huge disconnect here. How can, how can such a devoted, honorable, anointed man of God... Commit such an evil thing. Murdering the husband because he coveted, he coveted the wife. Now before you start judging him for this act, do you have someone you don't like? I, I know I have a few. Maybe someone who has hurt you, spoken evil of you, maligned you, cost you your job or a relationship, maybe stole from you or broke your heart. Jesus said, anger towards another is basically the same as murder in the heart. Murder begins in the heart. You see, the heart is where all things stem from. Our mouth, it speaks out of the, the thoughts, the fullness of our heart. Our heart, when it is full of hate, 
produces hateful thoughts. Hateful thoughts produces hateful words. Hateful words grow into hateful acts and vice versa. I mean, our heart, the Bible says, is deceitful above all things. And beyond cure, who can understand it? One day, you feel like you're in the top of the world, and the next day, you're at the bottom of the pit. This is why it is the real battleground, battleground between God and the evil one, our hearts. Whoever has your heart has you. All your attention, all your desires, all the motives is dictated by your heart. Whoever rules it. Whoever takes possession of it, rules and possesses. David's response shows us what to do when everything seems to be over. And this leads me to my first point. Start in repentance. <laughs> Finish in worship. After getting hammered with so many judgments, David answered this. I have sinned against the Lord. A true sign of humility. He then does what the, the man after God's own heart would do. He fasted and humbled himself before God, pleading with God for the child. But when he found out that his son had died on the seventh day, he does this. Second Samuel 12, 20. He gets up from the ground, and after he had washed, he put lotion on, and changed his clothes. And then he went into the house of the Lord and worshiped. That is the David that we knew. You see, if you're home, say wake up to the next person next to you. I'm not talking about wokeness, but I'm talking about repentance. Take a deep look where you are and realize that there is something that we need to stop. There is something that we need to let go. There is just something that we need to give up to the Lord. And, and, and really ask ourselves, what is this thing that's taking God's space in our life? Will you surrender that? Will you turn away from that and turn to God? From that sin, from that struggle, from anything that where God is supposed to be consuming in. Give it to him. And turn towards them. Whatever that is, whether it be hopelessness or is it anxiety, is it fear, is it offense, is it depression, is it hate, any area of your life that you'd rather be in control of, unforgiveness or faithlessness, or loss, or all things that take the place of God, give it to the Lord. The Bible says, produce fruit in keeping with repentance daily. So if you can't give it all, all at once, do it little by little on the daily. Make room for Jesus in your heart. Make room for more of him than the things that you, than the things that you think you are suffering from. And you shall see that when you taste the goodness and grace of God, it's better. It is better because there is nothing like it. It's literally heavenly. The peace that comes from the Prince of Peace is without comparison. It is out of this world. And as many mistakes that David made, and as angered as we see God was, there was always room to go back into the house of the Lord to worship. Always a room. I know 2020 and 2021 or maybe even the last 30, 40 years of your life, May have been hard, but the house of the Lord is open for you. Whether now it's online or at a virtual sermon or a Bible study or simply in your qu own quiet time, in your quiet space, in your secret place with the Lord. There is the presence of God. There is always room for you in God's house, brothers and sisters. This is what David reminds us of. And sometimes, you just have to let yourself go. It's easy to get caught up in the sin and the consequences, and, and it's very hard for us. I know for myself, for myself, it was hard to get back in the house of the Lord and realize it had always been open. But as God 
has welcomed me. He welcomes you. Join me to surrender in worship. You see, we have to choose not to worship the things that consume us, the guilt and the anger and all these things that press us down in our faith, the consequences of our mistakes, the states of our mind, whether it's depressed or unfeeling or, or maybe we don't even realize it. We worship it. Let's worship the Lord, the real King of kings, the Lord of lords. Because really, it is really in the presence of God where freedom reigns. He came to set all the captives free. Brothers and sisters, you are not bound by the curses of the past. Because whoever the Son sets free is free indeed. Claim that freedom. Get up from the ashes. See, it's only in the presence of God where we can truly find rest. Isn't it in the presence of God where we can find the strength and courage to do the next step? Which leads me to number two. Accept the circumstance and do what is right in the sight of God. David, after worshiping in the house of God, and after he had found out that his child had passed, went back to his house, his own house. He ate, took care of himself, and this confused some of the people. His attendants asked him, why are you acting this way? While the child was alive, you fasted and wept. But now that the child is dead, you get up and eat? He answered, while the child was still alive, I fasted and wept. I thought, who knows? The Lord may be gracious to me and let the child live. But now that he is dead, why, why should I go on fasting? Can I bring him back again? I will go to him, but he will not return to me. See, one key thing that David had done here is experience the grace of God to its utmost form. You see, this revelation is just not found by thinking long, hard thoughts or it's not the kind of strength that comes from within. It is something that can only be received because how can a father just say, it's done. It is what it is. Unless all his tears have been dried up in the house of God. You see, how can a broken man seem to be put so well together in that answer? How can a cursed man seem so confident with moving forward with life? See, this is the trait of the man that we knew. He was familiar with the presence of God. This is the trait of a man after God's own heart. He accepted his circumstances without resistance because it's futile to resist God's word, his will. We certainly have the choice to keep wrestling, but we already know the outcome. God always wins. It's no use, my brothers and sisters, to resist the maker of heaven and earth. I mean, how awesome would it be, you know, to hear what his prayer was like in that secret place when he gained that strength to be able to get up when he just lost his child. We've been given that privilege. And it's actually found in Psalm 51. And I would love to read it to you. Psalm 51, for the director of music, a psalm of David, when the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. He said this, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my inequity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. You see the wrestling here. He says, against you and you only have I sinned and, what, and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. 
Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my inequity. Create in me a pure heart, O oh God. I love that prayer. And renew a, stead a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your, from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. You who are God, my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My, in burnt offerings, verse 17. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart, you, God, will not despise. Isn't that amazing? It took so much adversity, so much pain to be able to, able to get this out of him. God had wanted more from David than just sacrificial offerings because he had been very successful in his reign. Now I asked earlier, where was David's heart? Now after reading this, we know, we know now it's not where it needed to be. What do I mean? See, to reach this kind of understanding of God's love, David needed to experience what he experienced. How can you lead others who are astray unless you've been astray? How can you teach and speak about the grace of God and know it unless you have tasted it yourself? Friends, you will never know Jesus as a healer unless he heals you from your wounds. You will know, never know Jesus as provider unless you taste his provision in your need. You will never know him as Prince of Peace until you taste the peace that comes from God. In the middle of all your turmoil, all your distress, and all your pains, you will know, never know him as sufficient until he is all that you have. How can we know him as the resurrection and the life? Unless we die. There's no need to resurrect the living. So let God decide when it's really over. I asked the Lord, David was a good, faithful servant. You could have stopped him right in his track when he was about to commit wrong. But you didn't. And this is my revelation. Just as the flower doesn't last, but must make way for seeds to turn and to form so that a new plant can grow. Just as the winter season won't last, but must make way for spring to come and all the other seasons. Just as the night must make way for the morning sun. 
So it is with us. There is a season and a time for everything. God sees your pain. God sees your struggles. Thank you. God sees whatever that is in front of you that seems impossible to overcome. And I just want to remind you that even that shall come and pass. Because God makes everything beautiful in this time. Please do not give up. Rejoice in your testing because God has not forsaken you. He has not left you. He is building you up. He is not against you. He has a plan for you. And it is good. So how do you turn a murderer to a worshiper? How do we start over when everything seems over? Start in repentance. Finish in worship. Because as I said, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Accept your circumstance. Even though it's so hard, I can only imagine what you're going through. What's done cannot be undone. God is interested in your future. Hang on. Stand faithful. And just, even if you can, on the daily, just simply do what is right in the sight of God. That's all that is required of you. Because as David had discovered, God does not delight in sacrifice or he would have brought it. He does not take pleasure in burnt offerings. See, our sacrifice to God is a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart God never despises. What a, what a powerful message from uh, Pastor Mark. Um, to follow up with that song, with a, with a message, we want to sing this song. We just ask God to give us a pure heart, a broken and contrite heart. Jesus, thank you. Come on, sing this with us, a pure heart. Pure heart, that's what I long for. A heart that follows heart after thee. A pure. That's what I long for, a heart that follows heart after you, a heart that hides your word, a heart that hides your word, so that sin That please 
praise is you, my Lord, a sweet aroma of worship that rises to your throne. That's what I long for. Come on, church, sing it out loud. A heart that follows hard after. appreciate Pastor Mark for that amazing and awesome and powerful message. Again, we want to be able to thank uh, those that, that stuck with us through some of the def technical difficulties we had on YouTube, and uh, we want to be able to just recap and just close out this, uh, this message. So in terms of Pastor Mark's message uh, titled Starting Over Again, from point number one, we have to be able to start in repentance and finish in worship. And number two, accept the circumstance and do what is right in the sight of God. Um, he shared Psalm 51, verse 8 to 10. I want to be able to just uh, focus on these two verses. It says, let me hear joy and gladness. How many of us just want to be able to just hear joy and gladness? Just after the year that we've had, even the, the 24 days that we've been in, in 2021, it just seems like, like so many things are happening and taking place, and we just want to be able to hear that joy. It says, again, let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. He gives, Pastor Mark was sharing the, uh, the posture from David's heart that I think we can all take away from this message today. We have to be able to just come before the Lord and just ask God to be able to just do whatever he can in and through our heart and in and through our lives. It, it should be that desire of our heart to be able to just have that pure heart once again before our God, to be able to just have a steadfast spirit that will continue to persevere through whatever circumstances we are facing, we are going through, so that we can come humbly before the Lord. As Pastor Mark was sharing, that there's so many things that are happening in and through our life that we can have and leave a, a blessing for our family and our future families. I also just want to be able to just add this verse from Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12. The Bible tells us, For I will demonstrate my mercy to them and will forgive their evil deeds and never remember again their sins. God has given us a promise and hope in His new covenant and everything that he's doing, that we can walk boldly again because of what Jesus has done on the cross for us and what he has done to be able to cleanse and purify our sins. And just as we close out today's service, uh, once again, I want to be able to just ask you if you could just join us in prayer. Father God, we continue to thank you again for that powerful message from Pastor Mark, that we would continue to humble ourselves before you, Lord, that we would repent, Lord God, and turn from our wicked ways, Lord, 
and just ask forgiveness, Lord, for the, for the things that easily entangle us, Lord, as we just continue just to ask that the blood of Jesus would just cleanse and purify our hearts. Lord, as we just start off this year, yes, we are 24 days in, but we just ask and pray, Lord, that we would take this moment right now, right now, Lord God, to be able to keep our eyes focused and fixated on you, to be able to leave behind, Lord God, any sin that it entangles us, to leave behind any weight that is holding us back, to leave behind, Lord God, anything from this world that is taking the place of you. Lord, we thank you once again. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Good morning, Cross Culture Church. Good morning, and thank you for joining our online worship service. And thank you for continuing to support our ministry. We have three ways we can keep doing that. Number one, you can go online to the crossculturechurch.org and click the word give. Two, you can text the word give to 424 292 2600. And third, you can mail a check to 9659 Balboa Boulevard in Northridge, California, zip code 91325. And we want to thank you again for all your prayers and your financial support. All your giving is a tax deduction. God has been faithful in helping us through the years, and we are very excited for what God has in store for us in the new year. Also, on January 15th, our small groups meeting will embark on a new sermon series called Anxious for Nothing, a curriculum from a well-noted and familiar author, Max Lucado. We are confident of the future in God. It's been said, never be afraid of, to trust an unknown future to a known God. So we will welcome the new year, Anxious for Nothing. Lastly, we hope your kids will join our Kids Connect ministry every Sunday on Zoom at 9.30. Just look out for the Cross Culture Church email. Remember, you are loved and prayed for. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you guys soon. God bless.